Welcome to Truth and Company Boxing Podcast for another segment of 20 Random Questions. I'm your host, John the Truth Theoria, and today's guest is former WBC world champion and IBA champion for professional boxer Roberto Garcia. How you doing, Roberto? I'm good, man. I'm enjoying life and uh, just uh, getting ready for a beautiful family barbecue. (laughs) Yeah, it looks pretty nice out there. Thank you. Thank you. So for the fans that don't know, um, we were talking off here. You actually just had a fight recently. Yeah, I had a – I had a because uh, I'm the kind of guy that – I fought in three different weight classes. I've been ranked top three in, the, in all of them, all, 147, 154, and 160. And I'm a former middleweight WBC world champion and a former IBA uh middleweight champion too and a former <laughs> world to iba champion and wbc like i mean i just i it's a bunch of stuff a bunch of stuff but um uh, i i just had one uh i, I had came down in last uh see, july 22nd after winning the iba middleweight title i won it then i defended it at 160 then uh, they got me another fight for a world title uh, i was already past my prime though but I'm a fighter. A fighter never leaves inside from the heart, man. So, I thought, you know what? Why not? Uh, I'll explain all that in a minute. But uh, he got me another title shot. I go, let's do it. But I had to drop down an additional weight class. So, I had to basically drop. Because I have to drop to make 160, right? Then I have to drop to make 154. So, I had to drop, <laughs> boom, boom, two classes. Yeah, whatever, man. I, it's fine. I'm just explaining it, you know. So, I did it. And I had I haven't weighed 153 in in like six years <laughs> so i did it man yeah i did it and i just i couldn't get going man. i couldn't let go i mean i i did it it was a real questionable uh stoppage i was arguing with the referee when he stopped it at around nine i was arguing with him i was blocking him when he stopped it uh, i kind of was like what okay uh but that's fine whatever um did that and then that was at 153 54 then we got another uh fight to get back on track it was january 27th i had a it was supposed to be an eight-round fight, but they moved to a six. The commission, I don't know why. I'm not a six-round fighter, man. You know, I, I, need, I need at least eight, eight minimum, but like 10, 12 rounds. That's I'm a, I'm an endurance guy, but they put it on six rounds. That's just too, it's real quick, you know. So I, I had him out, man. I had, he was already dead. And then the fourth and fifth round, I was pretty kind of getting my gear going, and they started. Like, I, I think I won, man. But they made it a draw for I don't know, whatever. That's fine. So. So now we were, we were talking off air. Um, you're, you're, I mean, like you said, you're just a fighter, man. As long as the money's right, you're not ready to go yet. And I know the fans love that you're still around, but some of this new generation boxers might not love the fact that you're still around. <laughs> that, that's true. It is true. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they, they uh, yeah, man, it's whatever, you know. But I, I don't like you said, like, I don't, to be honest, man, at this point, uh, very, uh, very, uh, I'm happy, man, because I mean the bottom line in every fighters, every fight, every boxer that I know of in the world, what is the main goal? Let me ask you, what's the main goal of every fighter when they start fighting? And then when they turn pro, what is it? What's the goal? Well, they want to be, I would think they want to be a world champion, and if they're lucky enough to be get in the hall of fame. Yeah. And, but and I think and awesome. you've already been a world champion, and I think you're gonna be in the hall of fame. Amen, sir. God family boxing always, man. I I, I just I, I uh, I'm ha- I'm I'm happy that I, that I actually accomplished the goal, and I and the fact that the way that I did it was <laughs> I did it the old school way, man. I uh, I um uh, I had to go somewhere else to another country and fight that promoter's fighter and their their guy, and I had to really fu- flip the the tortilla on them to get the win, man. <laughs> so and I had to beat a guy who was 11 years younger than me too. So that was that wasn't supposed to happen. He was supposed to beat me, you know. But we we upset him, and that, that's the thing, man. I'm so happy that I mean, I upset me a world title. Like it wasn't it wasn't laid out for me to win it. Like it was it laid out for me to lose it. But I actually won it. So I think winning it in an upset upset manner was even more beautiful than just winning it when you're supposed to win it. Okay. So listen, you ready to get to these twenty random questions? Yes, sir. All right. Question one. So before we get to the boxing part, I want the fans to know, tell me about your background and your upbringing a little bit before boxing. Before boxing? 
Actually, you know, I, 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 I'm, it's kind of a, the fact that, I, that I've done, I didn't start boxing until I was 17, 18 years old, man. And that's what I mean is I want the fans to understand where you came from, how you got brought up, you know, if you got any siblings, things like that. And then the next question, we'll talk about the boxing. Gotcha. Yeah, I, uh, I moved down here to South Texas where I'm at right now in 1991. I was uh, 10, 11 years old. I, I moved, we moved down here from Houston because of uh, – my parents were i had lost both my parents you know in houston the, the same day same night same house that we were there and when that happened to us we had no other choice to, but to move the closest next closest place where our family is which is down here in south texas and you know the border's right here so we move here and we've been here since 1991 and I, I grew up here and this is my home i love it here this is my home and uh you know, things, uh, and then after moving down here, so I'm here without parents. Next thing is, uh, I'm trying, I'm getting thrown everywhere, like not in a bad way, but they're trying to fit me somewhere who can parent me. So, me and my two older brothers, three of us, two older brothers, we all kind of scattered out our different ways. Like, my oldest brother, he had a baseball scholarship, my other older brother, he went with his thing, his route, and I was over here alone. So, we're all different different ages and everything. I, there's a big gap between me and my two older brothers because I'm a later child. And uh, so, so, so if, all, you don't, if you don't mind, <laughs> if you're okay talking about it, you said you lost both your parents in the same house. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm honest. And, and I built strength over the years, strong to talk about my, my things. And I, I think that Nobody on earth is perfect. We're all human. We all have mistakes. We all have failures. We all have, you know, accomplishments, all kinds of things. So nobody's perfect. Nobody. And uh, I, uh, my parents, you know, my, my father had a, had a very bad drug problem. And unfortunately, my innocent mother was in that process in the way of all that. And what I mean that she was so innocent, an angel. And my father got lost. My, uh, my mother, I mean, my aunt from Mexico told me that the devil got inside him. So my my father ended up doing something really horrible, something that I would never thought in my life would happen to us. And uh, it just, it was, it was horrible to see something like that at, at 10, 11 years old. I, to see to see my 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 mother looking at me while she's having her last breath she was shot in the chest by my father and then my father took his own life wow and I okay. to him and I, I i've gotten stronger and I, and everybody knows that knows me knows my story i've never hid my life from nobody I, you've, i've always said the truth i speak the truth man my faults and all you know you know, I've, I've made mistakes in my life. Who hasn't? But I've done a lot more good things, though. So who ended up taking you and a relative then that parented you? Yeah, uh, several, several, uh, a couple of uncles, seriously, uncle, uncle, aunt, aunt, uh, friends. I even lived with friends as I got so a little you bit. Did, so you did all this bouncing around and you went through that traumatic thing and you still became a world champion. That's amazing. And and but the, the, the yeah the, the see that is that is that's that's what I'm saying like the fact that I became one I mean that we have other chance don't get me wrong it's great but the way that I did it is hard as hell man it's way harder to do it in my shoes than in other shoes that's so all do I'm you saying. do you do you feel that that um I guess staying on the right path basically saved your life then the boxing saved my life my my, my wife told me that she said. You know, because in, in the high school and all that, when I, when I first went to the, to the boys and girls, my local boys well, and girls. Well, all right, let's get to that right now. Then the question two is, how did you get involved in the sport of boxing? I uh, it was always around. Like I would always watch it. My uncle did. for us and my family, the boxing is like a Super Bowl to us. Especially the big fights, it's like a Super Bowl. We get together, barbecue, watch the fight. We're loud. We're like the loudest neighbors. But uh, it was always there, you know. And but until. Do you remember a fighter named Prince Nassim Hamed? Absolutely. Right? 
we're watching this. I never forgot that day because we're watching him on HBO, Boxing After Dark. I miss Boxing After Dark. We so need that back. We're watching that. And I was, we were glued to the TV, me and my, me and my brother, George. And I was excited and jumping off the bed like I'm watching. And he tells me, he he looked at me in my eyes. He said, he goes, hey, Rob, why don't you join boxing, bro? He goes, you don't like to go to school. You don't like to work. You don't like to do nothing. Why don't you join boxing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, I was, I was, I had no direction at all, literally, 17 years old. And I looked at him and, and I said, seriously? He goes, yeah. And, and it like stayed with me. It sunk in. It really hit home. It hit home. When we were sunk in, I, the very next day, I, I go to the, there, and there has to be a boy, so I went to the boxing club. I just went there, man. I walked in and I never forgot to this day when I walked in that damn gym and the very back, it was an old school gym, bro. In the very back, dusty ring. I can hear the boards of the ring, the guy shadow boxing. I can hear the boards. He's in the, it's like a Rocky movie, man. I the light on top. The coach was there eating the orange. Let's talk to talk to him. And he said, "You want to box?" I said, "Yes, sir." He goes, "Come, man, I'll train you." And man, I, I went in that gym, and I have not stopped boxing till 1998, 2024, man. <laughs> Jeez, wow. crazy! That's amazing. Yeah, when you yeah. think about everything you've done in your career, everywhere you've been, every every yeah. household name you've fought, <laughs> and everything you've been through outside the ring, how you've maintained that the discipline is amazing. And see, if you saying that just made me realize I actually, I, I'm always kind of like in somewhat of a fight. Like in the ring, I'm here, I'm alert, I'm doing aware, I'm out here, I'm aware, I'm alert, <laughs> both. It's like a metaphor of life, man, boxing. I always keep yeah, but you Yeah, but you never gave up the discipline, and that's why you've gotten to the point you are, outside the ring and inside the ring. Absolutely. I had, my, my life experience, experience has made me the way I am. Okay. Yeah, it's just I, I, I wasn't supposed to be do anything. I, I'm a high school dropout without parents, homeless, and, and and I became a successful fighter without a big promoter behind me. Not just was, a successful <laughs> fighter, a world champion. That that thing, and and that was in my third weight class, and and I upset a guy that's 26 years old. I was 37 when I became a champ. Most like now over ninety percent of fighters they're not even fighting at thirty seven. That's true. All right, question three: Do you have any hobbies outside the sport of boxing? Yeah, I do. Uh, I love. Uh, I don't know if this makes sense, but I enjoy having a good time. <laughs> what I mean by that, <laughs> what I mean by that is, to me, a good time to me is having steaks cooking up the grill. The pool out, drinks, family, friends, laughing with the right quality people. To me, that's my disco nights. That's to me. That's the best. I love it. I don't do clubs. I don't do all that crap, man. I make my own club at home. And, you know, we, we get together. We have some amazing, beautiful family parties. Uh, I have business parties with my clients, too. Uh, I have my own business that, that I made from scratch, you know. And, and I've been very fortunate and grateful to God, man, that... uh. Boxing has led me into these directions kind of opening my own business and, and meeting an incredible I met a, a woman and I know this and I've never been afraid to tell her. I said, I know my mom would have loved you. So now what me. kind you said you started your yeah. own business. What business is that? Well, I'm I'm a private personal trainer. I uh, I train people a lot of uh the way it works is I'm not a, a personal trainer like at a gym. I'm a personal trainer. Like I, I go to a lot of my clients, they, they don't like going to public gyms, you know, because they're busy, you know. So a lot of them have gyms in their own homes, and we, we I train them privately in their homes. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do for all my clients, yeah. I was, right. I was with Dr. Paul right now. <laughs> in the morning, I train him there. Then I got to work out in, came home, took a shower, breakfast is here. And I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Yeah. Hey, I mean, feel free to eat. I don't want your food to get cold. If you want no. to eat during the interview, no, yeah, I will eat. I will. Yeah, I love tacos. I think it's one of the best creations ever, man. <laughs> you, the taco was one of the best inventions ever. You could do well, anything I, with it. I agree with you. I love tacos too. Thank you. Taco time. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Question four: What advice do you give a kid that wants to become a boxer? Uh, okay. Um. If I, as far as my opinion, just because of my experience, it's not the answer. It's just my answer. Would be would be uh, 
have have do uh, pursue your your hobby your dream of being a fighter but have have something supporting you along the way of that dream you know what i mean like because uh it's not a plan b it's just a a a, a way to stay on track like um don't throw all your eggs in one basket type deal you know like i i i i always approach my dream i said i'm gonna be what i made a promise to my mother in 2003 in, the, in their grave my parents grave that I would bring them a world title to their tombstone. 2003, I did not deliver it to 2017. And I fought for a world title in 2007, two weeks before I got married with Freddie Hernandez. I was winning the fight. I was the IBA world title at 147 though. I was ranked number three in the IBF in the world and all across the board. I was higher than Margarito, Zab Judah, Joshua Fadi, uh, who else was there? Uh, uh, Luis Colazo, I was ranked above all of them in the IBF, and the IBF is a legit organization. They're not like watered down. The other ones, the IBF, you can't, you can't buy them out. They keep the rules, like you know what I mean. I'm just being honest, man. And uh, so that was pretty badass to be there, number three. And the champion at that time, 07, 2007, was Kermit Cintron. Do you remember him? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm actually, right? I'm yeah, I'm acquainted with him. Uh, we talk from time to time. Yeah, he was a world champ at that time. He was a monster at that time. Remember him? He was killing. I mean, he, he, and he was a great fighter, a strong guy. He was the IBF world uh, welterweight world champion. And there wasn't a one or a two. Number three was Roberto Garcia at 147, IBF. Under me was, uh, it was three. And then number four was like, uh, I think it was Magarito, then Zab Judah, Joshua Claudi, Colasso. Like, you know? That's amazing. Was, yeah, you can remember yeah, all of that. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I just actually, hey, man, I mean, my wife said that too. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm happy. The doc. I just got my all my medicals done this January for this fight. Cause you got, in Texas, you heard about the Jake Paul Mike Tyson thing? Yeah, I try not to. But you know the medical. <laughs> there. I know Texas has a different uh, way of doing medicals to approve the fight, and uh, they have to do. I, I just did all those exams. After 36, you gotta do like reaction tests and different EKG, EK, a bunch of stuff, man. It's a bunch of medicals. So, all right. So question five: What? What was your lowest point in your boxing career and what has been the highest point in your boxing career? The lowest point was uh, after I got married. Uh, I was ranked number three in the world, making great money on the regular. I had just bought a condo and uh, everything was booming. I had a, a two new cars. I was rolling. like I hadn't had babies yet. I had just got married with a beautiful queen, my queen, and uh, everything was great. That I had no idea that my life was about to change it was in the next uh, two years after that. So I had fought for a world title. I was fighting on TV constantly, like not stop back to back to back to back. Uh, it, a lot of the, like um, back in the days, they would have like the, you know, they have like kind of like box on steak, a solo box sale. It's kind of too. I was just nonstop boom, boom on there and um, headlining all those. I, I beat Juan Carlos Rubio for the IBA Intercontinental also title. I upset him. I actually retired him at 29. I detached his red nose. And uh, that was a 147 fight. And it was a good fight, though, man. I, I tell, and that one I was supposed to lose, too, but I, I beat him. And, and uh, so from there, after, after I got married, things went down, like really down. Um, I, I wasn't fighting. And I was going to court with a promoter I had to, at that time. Uh, I couldn't fight in the U.S. because I was still on contract, so I, I had to move. I moved to Los Angeles for four years. Me and my wife went over there. With I didn't know a single person in L.A., but just being there and I was sparring all these badass guys. That's how I met Fred Rose. That's how I met Pacquiao. I was there with Pacquiao, man, for four years. We were training there. He gave me his, his boots. He liked my little dog. I had a Chihuahua. He would carry the dog. He gave me Pacquiao boots. He signed them for me. I have them here, man. The, the badass boots. Sorry about Manny Pacquiao. And I was watching that 24 7 the recording. And I, I remember what Freddie told me, man, welcome to the Wildcard family. And like, it was cool, man. At that time, right there, when the Pacquiao, the Chavez, at that, Freddie Roach was hot at that time. When Manny Pacquiao was hot, that's when I was there. Yeah, but how was that the lowest part of your career? No, no, no like, uh, it, was, it was, I was, that's why I kind of started going up again when I went okay. there. I started meeting, and then just boxing guys. I was boxing Chavez Jr. American, boom, boom. I, man, I, I I was so happy, man. I, remember I lit him up real bad, and he's like, hey, he he never forgot me because at first he looked at me like I was nobody, 
But after that sparring session, he's hey, Roberto, <laughs> we with him, with Paulie, my imagine him too. He was cool. Paulie's cool. Uh, everybody, Kid Chocolate, I mean, all the guys, Triple G. I have it on video. My wife recorded me sparring Triple G. We did seven, uh, four minute rounds at Big Bear, California, man, at the summit. Yeah, that was hard, man. I was getting ready for Antonio Magarito. So, after what I'm saying is, I was at the, at the wild card and I started meeting guys and just, just letting my hands go. And people started saying, that guy from Texas, that guy from Texas. So, I started getting a little recognition. And I started meet, making friends, meeting managers, meeting trainers, meeting promoters. So the little things started getting better for us. I started getting fights, but I had to fight outside the country. I fought in Costa Rica three times. As a matter of fact, the promoter at that time, he was the original, the very first promoter ever to do internet boxing. It was called fightnet.com. And he I used remember to tell that. Me, old school. And he told me, he goes, Roberto, trust me, man, this is the future. This is the future. He's right. Look at it now. Yeah. Back then, as he was right, so that's that was that, and and uh, then my wife, my my wife was pregnant, and we're in LA, and, and she was getting, you know, and uh, I said, no, I, my my baby, I'm not gonna have my baby in LA, in California. I'm gonna go back home in Texas. With my mom, of course, baby, we'll go home. So we come back home in Texas, uh, pretty much uh, 2011, like November, pretty much 2012. Come home, my daughter's born in the hospital, and I'm with her on that because I'm a new father. And then I got a fight on ESPN, man, in like, it was, I think it was like 17, 18 days. It was real quick. And I was going to fight Antoine, the true Smith. He was a younger guy, 24 years old. I was 32. And, you know, I was all right, so I, I, I flew to New Jersey. I trained real quick with the guys. I loved, that was the thing, man. New Jersey was one of the best places I ever trained. I lived there for 14 years in New Jersey. And, uh, so we trained, man, a quick, you know, 15-day camp, hard as hell. I sparred a couple of times. We came back. I pulled an upset in ESPN. I beat Antoine Smith. I mean, hands down, uh, bad, 10-round decision. I beat him on ESPN. Um, then uh, things were rolling a little bit. Then, I, again, I sat down for a year and a half, no fights. I'm like, man, what happened, bro? I just beat this guy in ESPN. I can't get no fights. It's, it's been like that. So I was like... Ah, so throughout my career, I've had big gaps, like a year and a half, a year and a half. So that's kind of saved me, I guess. So it just, it's, it's been a fuck, man. I, I could be here all, I need a couple hours, bro, because it's, <laughs> it's serious, man. It's a, it's a story and a half, man. I'm telling you. So all just right, fight, man. All right, question six. If the mayor of your city was willing to name something after you, what would you want named after you in your city? After me, uh, probably just uh, like a park, a park, okay, a park or something. Yeah, I like the parks, man. Take my kids there. That'd be pretty badass, you know. Uh, yeah, something like that. A park would be cool. All right. Question yeah. seven: If you had to spend thirty days in a jail cell, what comedian would you choose to be your cellmate? Comedian? Yeah. Uh. What can we do? That's a good one. Can I pick two or three? <laughs> okay. No, you can only pick one. They can't fit two or three in a yeah, cell. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Probably uh, a guy I used to like a lot back in the days. I don't know if he's still around. Mark Curry, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> Remember him? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He was funny, dude. Yeah. All right. Question eight. Now, we know that you fought a lot of big names and you fought a lot of great fighters, but I'm curious – Who's been your favorite opponent in your career? Favorite or hardest? No, What's no, your fa your favorite opponent. Oh, favorite. Shit, man. I can't pick just one, man, because... Okay, give me a couple then. I'll give you a couple. Uh, Liam Smith. Do you know Liam Smith? Yeah. I fought him on six days notice. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. I didn't spar a single round. It was such a big opportunity. And the reason I took it was because uh, uh, it was a, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, I was here in my home. I was here. My manager at that time, I was still with Don King at that time. And uh, they called me, go, hey, Roberto, congratulations. You got a fight. I go, yeah, I'm awesome. Where are you? I got you a fight with Leon Smith. I'm like, fuck, yes. Bad ass, let's go. And, he, and then the, my wife's making my breakfast, whatever. We're going to go to the beach. It was my anniversary that day. And he says, um, it's uh, December 20th. My wife looks at the camera and she's like, hey, that's in six days. I was like, what? I'm going to fight in six days on the zone? <laughs> yeah, literally, man. In the ring. 
I was like, fuck, we got to get to work. I call the guy, hey, bro, I'll see you at the gym, man. So we cut over 15 pounds in five days. I got all my medicals, flew to Phoenix, ran another. Actually, Eddie Hearn was next to me. We were in the gym at the hotel. I was running like an hour and a half with that cutting weight suit, cutting off weight, man. And he was right next to me. He was just, just cut some weight, Roberto. I'm, I was cutting weight. And I made weight. I was under, man. I fought him, bro. And, and we went 10 rounds. I lost the decision with Daniel Smith, the number one in the world, bro. Six days notice. That was, that was wild, man. And who, but, who who's another opponent then that's Mark, one of your Mark favorite? Murray, another one. You know who Martin Murray, Mur Murray is? Martin Murray. Martin Murray. Yeah. I fought yeah. him on 17 days notice, man. <laughs> I defended my world title. Uh, actually, the one I beat from Chavez. Uh, Ten months go by. We couldn't. Don King couldn't give me a single fight, man. And we were this close to fighting Triple G because uh, we were both champs at the time. Triple G. I was champ when Triple G was champ. That, that exact. And uh, Triple G was going to fight Canelo on a Mexican holiday. But Canelo at that time, he was eating the tacos that had the, the dirty meat. Remember that deal? Yeah. So they couldn't approve him. So And it was a Mexican holiday. And the only guy in the entire division, the only only ones that, that are Mexican, was Canelo and me in the whole division, middleweight. And, and, I, and I had the, the Super Bowl title. I mean, so it, it, everybody was like, dude, it, it should be me. It only makes sense. And no, they, they said, okay, Donkey called them. And they said, no. So they... they that guy, Abel Sant, Tom Lawson, him. They called the donkey. He goes, "What?" He goes, "It's real strange to me." Donkey said it. He's like, "It's real strange to me that they call me asking me about Vanes Montrosen. He's Armenian. He signed with I know Van. He's a friend of. We're at the wild card together. But he's not even a middleweight, and he hadn't fought in two and a half years. I mean, I'm happy for him because he got an opportunity, right? Yeah. But I'm just saying, like speaking out loud, like. Uh, so they, he, and Don King was like, what? He goes, he goes, why would you want him? He goes, I got Roberto Garcia. That's, that's the, the champ. And he's a Mexican on the Mexican holiday. I mean, I mean, and they said, they said, no. And he goes, man, my manager at that time, Lee Holiday, he was like, man, I've been, I've been driving Roberto Garcia down their throats. And they said, no. So I got past that one. 10 months still, no, no, no fight, no title defense, no nothing. And the WT was going to strip me because it had been a while. And I go, hey, bro. And then Donkey said, hey, hold on, hold on. Because uh, Martin Murray was going to fight, uh, what's that guy, Saunders? Billy Joe Saunders. That guy. They were going to fight main event on ESPN Plus. And they're in London, England at the old 2 Arena. But Billy Joe Saunders pulled out with a fake injury because he wanted to get the Canelo fight for big money. So he pulls out, and Martin Murray's left with no opponents. He's the headline of the whole show. There's no. And I go, hey, let's fight him, bro. I got the belt. Let's, I'll go over, I'll go across the pond and fight you. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I have to defend my belt. So we go over there and I did I we trained real quick here, a quick little thirteen days, and then we flew a fucking fourteen hour flight to like and we make weight there. We <laughs> fight and we twelve rounds. We went all twelve. And uh I I don't know, man. It, I don't I don't really think he beat us, man. It, he didn't really do anything. I was catching I was putting the pressure the whole fight. I bust his eardrum. He went to I preferred his eardrum. And uh, he didn't – like, it wasn't hard, man. It really wasn't hard at all. I was proud of myself, man. I, I mean, I cut all his weight. I didn't spar nothing. Short notice. And and he trained very good. I didn't – and we did great, man. I was like, hey, well, the big guy, he's huge. I'm only 5'8". This guy's 6'2". <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. And, and he remembered. Yeah. So, yeah, we, had a, we had a trip to London. I defended my belt. Got I got robbed from that belt. They took – oh, the referee – he took two points away for, I don't know what, but those two points hurt me. The real score should have been 115, 113. That's the real score. A split decision, us. I mean, I'm just being honest, but they gave okay. it to him. It was in London. That's fine, whatever. So, All right. yeah, man. Well, well, question nine. What's your opinion of these YouTubers and Internet influencers getting involved in the sport of box? My opinion on that is... I mean, they're, they're doing their YouTube is, a, is a, okay. Look, boxing now. I don't know if you saw. I had po I saw an interview by Mayweather the other day. I posted it because I was like, man, that makes that's true what he says. That's actually pretty right on point. He said it's nothing to be a world champion in this era today. And he said why? He said because back in the day, in our time, he goes, a fight would lose, we had to start right back from the bottom to climb back up, right? He goes nowadays. A guy will lose, he'll get another title shot his next fight. He goes, so it's nothing to be a world champion in this era today. 
And I like when Mayweather said that. I was, hey, that's actually true what he said. So the thing about it, I think now we're we're in the Jake Paul era because there's everybody's a fighter now. Yeah, but I mean, what's your opinion on these guys just coming in here, not earning their shots, not spending years in the gym training, amateur fights? They just get put on TV and make all this money when they don't even have any skills. I know, man. That's that's disrespecting the the other real real fighters. It's disrespecting the sport, man. It's a, I mean, how would they feel if they did that in basketball or in football? How would they feel if they did it in baseball? I think boxing is the only sport that, that's kind of, in my, if I had to use a word for it, it's kind of like, it's like boxing the Nickelodeon now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm okay. honest, bro. I'm sorry, no, you're I'm right. right. Sorry. All right. Question 10. Tell me an interesting story out of your boxing career. <laughs> did, you, did you see stories? <laughs> <laughs> just no one story man uh, man just anything good or bad <laughs> i have everything it doesn't matter just any story that comes to mind okay i'll give you i guess not the best but okay when i got signed with pvc you know how that happened i was here in my home in this neighborhood <laughs> And uh, my brother was having a barbecue down the street. That's why I call him the Good Luck Barbecue. He was there. He goes, "Come on, Rock." So we go making some awesome Texas burgers, jalapeno stuff, cheese. Re regular Sunday, Dolceki's chilling. The next day, my uncle promoter calls me. Go, "Hey, Rob, what are you doing?" And I said, nah, "I'm just chilling." I just woke up. He goes, "Hey, uh, listen, I got, I got a, I got a good fight for you." I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Yeah, I got a good fight for you." I said, "What's up?" He goes, "Uh." It's a, it's a good fight. It's a main event on Chicago on ESPN, man. You're the main event. I go, damn, that's great, man. Headlining the show on ESPN in Chicago. He goes, yeah, the Friday Night Fights. I go, bro, badass. Let's go. He goes, but the only thing, though, know, it's, uh, it's in 12 days. <laughs> How there was? So I have to, I'm fighting in 12 days? Okay. So I was like, yeah, I won it. So I called the coach. I had another coach at that time. Okay, coach, I, I got this fight, man. He goes, you know what? Oh. I'm going to give it to you. How much are you weighing? I go, I, I don't know. I go, let me go for a run, you know, so I can sweat. And I'll check my weight. I'll send you a picture of what I weigh. So, all right. So, I get on a, I get on a treadmill. I, I go, babe. So, I got to put everything. I ran like 75 minutes just to burn some weight off. And I say, hey, uh, I go, I don't care what I weigh, but I want it. I'm going to take it. So, I, I'm running my ass off. I, I get off. I the living room. And I, and I check my weight. I send him a picture. I weigh 171. What's the fight? I go, it's at 158. I was like, fuck, man. I go, fuck, I don't know if I can make 158 in 11 days. I said, fuck it, let's do it. I'm going to do it. I ended up becoming at 154 and a half. <laughs> and, Who was the uh, opponent? Norberto Gonzalez. He was a, when I fought him, he was actually like a, he was a Mexican Olympian in the Olympic. No, Norberto Gonzalez Demonio. He was 20 and 2 at that time. And right before me, he had just beat a guy in Miami that was undefeated. He knocked him out. So he was on the up when I fought him. You can look him up on Box Track. You, can, you know, that's all we say, man. Box look at any fighter like find the feet out. I said, Look, bro, uh, put your box rank, it says a lot, you know. So, I fought him, I, I we did it real quick, and I won. I upset him, uh, 12 days. Uh, I fought on there, I cut like 16 and a half pounds in, in 11 days, fought and won, man. And I beat him, I broke his hand, cut him, and that, 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 what I'm trying to say is. That uh, that sacrifice got me more. Like after that fight, they're like, "Shit, man!" Fifty Cent was trying to. He was calling us to get us a fight because he was gonna want us to fight. One of his, he was promoting that time. Fifty Cent, he was yeah. doing fighting with boxers, and they go, "Ah, oh, go." And then my man, the guys go, "Hey, Roberto, oh man, you go, I've always been here, bro. You just never give me a shot." <laughs> so he goes, "Man, you look great." So all right, I'm just doing. I'm gonna give you another ESPN. Really? All right, badass. I got. So we went from. February, then I fought again in May 1st. I headlined main event in Miami at the Don Shula Hotel. It was cool meeting Teddy Atlas, man. It was awesome. So I fought main event there, but I dropped the weight class. I came 146, and I fought Vitor Cayo. He was 32-4 and four with like 23 knockouts. Good record, man. I fought him, and I knocked him out in six rounds. <laughs> then after that fight, we literally just got off the ring right there in Miami, and the guy from ESPN he goes, "Hey, he goes, he goes, man, I want you again, July." And then the guy's like, hey, "Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna take up a showtime." And then, uh, <laughs> and then I come home. It was like real fast. I come home here, 
and he says, uh, I'm just here. It was real fast. He goes, all right, you're going to fight again July 25th with Brady's Prescott. You know who he is? Brady's Prescott. No, He's I the one that knocked out, He knocked out Amir Khan in one round. The okay. Colombian guy. That guy, yeah. I fought him. And uh, that was I was that one there. I was I was struggling to make weight, man. Cause it was at 147 on a dot. I like, shit. So we get there and we're in Chicago again. And I was running on a trail the day of the way, and the promoters came in. They were throwing throw, and they saw me running on a treadmill, all coated up with beanies and everything. I was running my ass off. What's he doing? He goes, man, that look. He goes, Roberto, what are you doing? He goes, that looks brutal. Cause they threw me in the sauna and everything. I made 145, man. I made 145 and a half. Fuck, I was so thirsty. We're weighing in, and usually when you make a weigh, when you go to the weigh-ins, the main event goes first, right? And everybody else, they did it backwards, bro. <laughs> the four rounders, and they, I was like, well, you guys are killing me, bro. <laughs> when I fight Prescott, we win. You know, we win that fight. Then after that, I get a. Uh, it was a while. Then I, oh, and then PBC started. That's when PBC first started. Yeah, I All started right, with question, it. Question, question eleven. So why do you box? Why? Yeah. I love it, man. I love boxing. I just fell in love with it, and but now like it, it feels different now because you go through phases throughout the because you know you start like when you start your career is like a four round, then a six round. Then you're becoming like a little prospect. Then when you get to like the 10, 12 rounds, you're starting to get a little more rugged, you know. And then the opponents get rougher, you know, because you know when you start off, I'm just being in my experience, you know, usually when guys are like five and zero, ten, you're starting off through it's it's a lot. The, the opposition's easier than later in your career. Because when you start getting to the real big fights, it's not as easy as it was when you first started. You know, so it changes. I mean, at least in my experience. Uh, but you still so you love it. it. Oh, hell yeah, man. I, I never lost the, the edge. I love boxing, man. And like I said, like, I'm not going to waste my time um, on little fights. I, go, I mean, if the money's right, absolutely, man. Because I, I know how to fight, man. I'm fine. I actually, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I went to the gym last week. My first day in the boxing gym with the guys, you know, after the fight, I had took some time off. I work out of my, myself here at the house, but to the gym gym, you know, the boxing gym. I went there with the guys. The first day, hey, what's up, Rob? What's up, man? I had just had my 44th birthday, man, last week. It was my birthday all week. <laughs> so we get there, and uh, we get there, and uh, I, I first day at the gym, there was, there's two guys, a heavyweight and a welterweight. They're, they're in training camp because they're fighting. And I go, hey, boy, um, you guys want to move a little, man? And I kind of bored just hitting the bag. Yeah, in the spar. And I did 10 rounds that day, <laughs> five rounds each. It was cool. It was random, too, man. It was just, it was just random. I mean, we're all boys. You know, we're all friends. We motivate each other. That was cool, man. It was pretty cool. Just having fun with it. So, yeah, like I said, I just, <clears throat> you know, when, in anything in life, man, if an opportunity comes, like a, a legitimate opportunity, absolutely. All day I'll get in shape for it and let's go. All right, question 12. Who was the hardest puncher you've ever faced in the ring in a fight or sparring? The hardest sparring puncher in sparring was two guys, Triple G and James Kirkland. Yeah. And Ann Wolf actually recorded both of them. And I asked, she, she won't post that video because of what happened. She won't post it. She hasn't. I wish she could send it to me both. Wait a minute. And, you uh, said because of what happened. What happened? We went at it, man. Actually, he passed away now. Uh, uh, pops the trainer. And I like Ann Wolf. I like James Kirkman. He's a good fighter, great, strong fighter, man. We, we sparred. We did like 10 rounds in 2012. And then we did again. They called me again in 2017. The he, oh, actually, as a matter of fact, he was supposed to fight Miguel Cotto. Remember James Kirkman? Yeah. It was that time. And it was, uh, they had called me. She was, hey, man, we're looking for sparring partners for James Kirkman. He goes, hey, I think I know you sparred James, bro. Yeah, yeah, I did. Twenty-two. Oh, yeah, I remember you. So, all right. So, and then he goes, okay, come over. He goes, uh, we're fighting Miguel Cotto. We need some hard work. I'm sorry. Right. So, we're send me the address. Thinking, pass Austin. Let's go. Because if you give me eight rounds, I'll give you uh, four hundred bucks. If you go ten, I'll give you five hundred bucks, and I give you food money. I give you gas money. I was like, I'm not doing anything. Let's go. So I told him, I told Orlando and my wife, hey, let's go. Just real have fun with it. Get easy five hundred bucks, real quick. So let's go. And we drove, man, 6 a.m. Drove all the way to Austin, waited two hours, sparred him. And what happened was sick, man. It was a big old fight there. The whole gym, the owner of the gym was actually on our side <laughs> because uh, it was vicious, man. What we did, bum, 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 you know, uh, good. It was a, that wasn't a sparring, that was a fight. And uh, yeah, it was rough. 
So <laughs> I'll just leave it like that. Okay, question 13. So tell me, when you won your world title, how did you celebrate? Uh, we didn't sleep. We didn't sleep. <laughs> we didn't sleep until we got home. So we won it in Mexico. We didn't sleep till the next day here in Texas when we flew here. And even then that night, I still had trouble sleeping. Mm. Okay. But we did have a, but that's not, that's not it. Then the, the week came in and we had a big uh, party at my grandma's old house where we all originally big party. I mean, you're talking like a fiesta, everything, everybody. It was big. And then this, my city gave me my own day. September 19th is Roberto Garcia day forever, forever, forever. Nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Question 14. If you had to be a clown for a kid's party, what would your clown name be? Clown. Huh. If I was a clown. <laughs> I don't know. Man. I guess the way uh, you the way you said that, I got a little scared when you looked up and you were like, if I was a clown. Like, you know what I mean? Like, is this dude calling me a clown? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I never, never thought. I never that's I've never been asked that if I was a clown. I don't know. Uh I don't know. Beto the clown, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and what, okay. All right, question 15. If you could hold one, if you could hold any record in the Guinness Book of World Records, what record would you want to hold? Uh, probably oldest world champion, but I'm not the oldest. George Foreman's the oldest. 45 no, years old. That, that's a good goal, though. Yeah, I got, I got it at 37, though, and I defended it at 38. <laughs> but uh, I didn't... I, 37 is still up there, though, because 37, most of them are... Retired. They're, they're, they're way retired man. A lot of them here, in my time, they've retired in the early 30s. So, okay. you know, I started All boxing at 18 years old, man. So. All right, question 16. If you could box any fictional character out of a movie or a book or whatever, who would you want to box? Whoever about anyway, movie or fighter for real? Anything? No, no, yeah, yeah. any fictional character. So somebody oh, out of a movie or a book or something, somebody that's actually not real. But if you had a chance to box them, oh, you Clubber want Lang, T. Clubber Lang, yeah, Clubber Lang. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. Question seventeen: If you could have any musical artist walk you out to the ring for a fight, who would you choose? Cypress Hill. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Question eighteen: If you were an insect, what insect would you be? Scorpion, I guess. Is that an insect? Is it? Uh, not. No, not really. Yeah. No. Shit, I don't know. Uh, probably. Uh, shit, man. An insect. Probably a praying mantis. Okay, yeah. Is that an it? It is. Yeah, is it? yeah. Something like yeah, like something that I has to defend itself. Yeah, but that that I could see you. That that's your that's your personality in the ring. I could see you being a praying mantis as an insect. Yeah, yeah cause I'm not really. I know what insects are, but I'm not even familiar. So yeah, just somebody. I guess some, whoever has to defend himself, like the way my whole life has been. Okay. All right, question 19. If you could gift one person a million dollars, who would you give it to? Um, <clears throat> my father-in-law that passed away. Okay. Yeah. All right, question 20. What is the craziest or the funniest story that ever happened between you and a boxing fan? Oh, a, a random house party they invited me to did you actually go yeah <laughs> <laughs> how did that turn out i had no idea what i was walking into man i hope it wasn't like a diddy party nah, no way i would have ran out of it immediately <laughs> no nah, it, was, it was just it was a very random uh random yeah yeah it wasn't bad which is like it was like whoa like different yeah 
but it went it was okay though everything went yeah. all right yeah it wasn't bad it just it just it was just different than what i'm used to yeah a different okay. kind of party different kind of party basically yeah okay well listen i appreciate you taking time man uh to come on and do the 20 random questions i had fun with you i learned a lot your stories were great. I'm sure the fans loved them as well. If you got anything to say to your fans before you uh before we end, go ahead. Um, just man, just um, if I have to say one thing, I would be like, for like boxing related, if if you're gonna if you want to be a fighter, um, it's different for everybody, man. But like, no matter what, man, if you win, if you want to achieve some success, I mean. Maybe you won't achieve every single goal, but you're gonna achieve some. Achieve some of them. You're gonna have to go through some hard stuff, but don't let that stop you, man. Don't let don't let setbacks or accidents or, or knockdowns stop you from achieving goals that you want out of life, man. Because later years back, like me, I'm I'm glad I never gave up. Like I told my friends, and my brothers, my family, you know what, bro? I, I, there's something relaxing about. Me walking around like, no matter what, I'm so happy I didn't waste my life because I accomplished the goal of being world champ. If I, if I had not been world champ, I'd still be cool, but but I didn't accomplish the goal. You know, I'm happy that I accomplished that that goal, man. That that's like the main goal of every fighter in the world, man. I'm glad I, I achieved it, man. And it, it I I got it. Not giving up, man. Like my daughter Bobby knows. She goes, "Hey, you're like a honey badger. You never give up." I said, yeah. <laughs> she gotta go through. She gotta go through. I mean, at least in my my way. I like I said, I did it the hard way, bro. Very hard, hard ass way, man. But it was possible for me. I tell you, man, that WBC belt is in a suitcase. I have several belts. They're in three weight classes. I'm actually gonna do a a, a nicer. Uh, You'll see later. It's gonna something real nice with all my belts. It's gonna be nice. So I'll let I'll let you know about that. Okay. Well, listen. I don't know how much longer you're gonna fight, but uh, you you might be like Hopkins. You might be around forever. But I mean, I just want to say thank you personally from me because I'm a huge boxing fan. Thank you for all the wars that you have given us thank because you. you're a type of guy that never goes in there to lose. I mean, no, you I go it like you said on short notice. You still show up to try to win. So I mean. There's yeah, you're 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 really part of it, you're, but you're part of the old school generation. You're one of the last guys left of the old school generation, and and I just want to thank you for everything yeah, that so you sacrificed. Accurate. I'm happy you said that because that didn't come from me. Everybody has told me that same thing. A lot of people, have, the ones that know me, you know, uh, they said it matter about and they, they gave me actually when I fought British Prescott. If you see on YouTube in the back of our office, all our Corman jackets, my it says on there, and they made it. Rival Boxing made a custom outfit for me, and it's badass, man. It, well, I'm the man of many names because of the momentum I have. Uh, they say, uh, Burger is the last throwback fighter, like you just said. Yeah, that's pretty dope, man. I think that's that's cool. Just I guess because just the, the way it happened, I. It just life. Uh, this is the hand of the hand I was dealt with in life. You know, everybody gets a different set of cards in life, man. Play your cards, whatever you got, you know. Yeah, but you're one of those last guy left that, yeah. I mean, when you look at all these fighters nowadays, a lot of them they try to protect their O, and that that was never you. You what you wanted the big fights, you wanted the name fights, you wanted to fight. That was it. You just wanted to fight and make I'm money. A I'm yeah. a fighter. Hey, who somebody said, uh, this is about a year and a half ago. We're at a gym, bro, and it was actually a woman that said this. A girl was working out there, and I didn't, I was surprised she actually kind of knew about fighting. I mean, I'm not disrespectful, but like, like you know, women don't usually know as much as men. I mean, not, not, I'm sure that there's something to know, but you know, usually. And she goes, you go, man, you go, yeah, you know, she goes, Tru truthfully, truthfully, Roberto, like, truthfully, you're a real fighter. And what she meant by that, it was so. I should have recorded what she said. But she's like, she goes, "There's a T." Uh, this other guy he says, "Nowadays, like the the fighters, they're athletes. You're not an athlete. You're a fighter. There's a difference." And it's kind of like what you're saying. And I I I, I see what they're saying. That, that is true, man. Just because the, the way our life made us that way. The, the exactly. shit happened. To you. The, the the experience made us this way. That's the way we grew, man. Like it just it happened that way. You're a born fighter. Bottom Absolutely. line. 
I had to, man. I had to fight even before I was a fighter. Seriously. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, um, once again, I appreciate you coming on. And if you got anything left to say before I end, just go ahead. No, man, just a uh, guy family boxing always. And um, you be you, man. Don't be afraid. People are always going to talk about you. Like, bro, like, man, you know, I have fans, but I have also have. Like everything, you have fans, haters, you have it's all that. That's normal. But uh I like I said, do it for you. Do it for you. For okay. yourself. For, you, for your for your 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 story. You're the one to hold the, the pin, so you write it, man. You know, like, do it for you, man. No matter what anybody says, they ain't the ones running the miles for you. All right, you know, and with that the truth has spoken. Hold on. <laughs>